in California called um, Nevada City. And um, they have, uh, I don't know if you guys know what police lodges is. I mean, every morning they have all the calls that the policemen have to make that night. Well, the one of um, 8-2014, a caller from the 12,000 block of Oldwood Road reported a woman screaming for 10 minutes. This is called Hannibal Lecter convinces her to swallow her tongue to death. I don't know if any of y'all seen Silence of the Lamb. Meek's got it in that. Yes, I did, Clarice. <laughs> Not the flower, but the thorn. Pricking holes in her radiance. The non-existent voices of manipulation and coercion perceived as solid matter, but only empty space, articulating the menace of thunder that ricochets across a model sterling gray cellulite sky. The invisible telepathic rabbit inside a glossy white paper frame around her, like a Polaroid, disconnecting her from the world, as if by disfigurement she could not circumnavigate. She only stop screaming when she used the butcher knife to cut the screaming rabbit's throat. As I said, um, I do have a book. You guys can hold your applause until I'm finished. That way, if I'm good, I'm good. If I ain't, I ain't. But um, I do have a book called Freedom Land Blues Out, and it takes a um, dirty blues look at the United States. It touches on everything, the good we do, the bad we do, and who we do it to and why we do it. But um, I'll be reading out of this, and also some of the poems I'm reading will be out of a book, another e-book that I'll have published by Kind of a Hurricane Press um, by the end of this month, and it is called um, Physiography of the Fittest. So I'll be reading from both of those. This one's called Obama Reads the Newspaper. The front page reports, safer to be deployed to a military base in war-torn region than survive on East Oakland streets. His country had been at war with someone else for as long as he could remember. They had gotten used to it. Right next to this is news of another killing spree with a photo of police in body armor carrying assault rifles, hurting children from a school. The president gaze hovers with indifference over the high school photo of a black teen shot 18 times by the police to dive with great relish into the commonplace appalling. A 30-year-old born-again Christian fundamentalist seals the tortured and strangled body of a six-year-old girl into a Samsonite suitcase and tosses her body into a reservoir. The child's name is omitted until relatives can be notified. The killer's photo, a self-righteous smile and status quo suit and tie, but a shortage of known facts obscured by guest expert speculation and corporate media lies. It's no use counting the multitude of murdered black youth, a sum too horrendous year in and year out, labels them as statistic as a murder of crows, stripped of their worth by the crude ignorance of stereotype. All hope seem negated by wrong time and wrong place. Their lives are breakneck double zero from incarcerated or death. But we've got we've gotten used to the white noise drama, the arithmetic of gravity in relation to status quo. This is um this one's called um Tristan and Isoli. I don't know how many of you have read that that um, fable, but it's something about unrequited love. And um I'm in love with Angela Bassett, especially in the movie Strange Day. Woo-wee! Yeah, I'd walk across the desert. Yeah. But um 
Um, this is called Tristan and Isolde, a theory of relativity. If love is relative to one's desire, is loving each other like crazy enough? Is true love sleeping in the dream another is having? Is love coalescing distance that draws the borders of lust into postponement of departure? Time complicit with attraction, a merging of stars cross, of magnetic opposites attract. Is love a cosmos run to infinity? And now 180 degrees, bossa nova lips, turning the key in distant hearts, grown fonder. And in walks an angel looking like Angela Bassett, straight out of strange days. And every time she kissed me, she made the lights go out. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have been keeping up with the news lately, but um, uh, um, uh, supposedly mentally ill man attacked four police in New York with a hatchet, and he took down two of them before they shot him and shot an innocent bystander. Now the thing that got me, they talked about, oh, these policemen, their children, oh, these policemen, their wife they left behind. But they failed to talk about the innocent bystander, the woman that got shot in the back. And the last thing they said about her was she was, in, she was critical. And then they said, well, hey, we'll just make this guy a Muslim terrorist. Then they'll believe anything we tell them. So this is actually, I mean, it's, it's really weird, but um, the world, basically, I got a note to this. The world has become a place where every bad act is tied to the Be Very Afraid Anonymous official spokesperson explanation of Islamic terrorism. We never stop to question whether the perpetrators are actually the bad guys or simply desperate victims driven to desperate acts by desperate times. So this one's called um, The Thief of um, Daylight. Hope y'all like it. Shadow Shooter. What didn't go right for him? hadn't gone right for Nat Turner, Che, or Alice Paul. These fragile walkers into the wilderness, not even the righteous can prove that God loved them. Tribulation began the moment security surveillance and pixelated his clenched fist, brandishing an explosive whisper of indignation and an internet history that included organized terror groups, the headings, and the shooting in Canada that officials there had called a terrorist act. What recourse his radicalized mind but simile, swinging the hatchet with a two-handed grip, bleeding his emotions onto his sleeve like a blind animal wounded. What he believes is more real to him than what he is told is the truth. The media spins and simultaneous ticker tape crawls, contriving a history of run-ins with the law and postings on social media, a chain man's howl of umbrage, the minority voice of mumbled outrage talking to himself, but persistent. He ranted about injustices in American society and oppression abroad. A prophet's warning rebuked as heresy beneath the national drumbeat of patriotic retribution and convenient blame that justified madness before it began, before extending the empire's frontiers. A terrorist attack, certainly, 
when murder plummets from a sky guised in freedom and democracy and remote controlled inventions of new ways of killing too little too late the stark remorse of collateral damage the bullet in the back of the fleeing passerby her only concern escape that didn't go right never to know why the pseudo martyrdom suicide by cop his last fading eyewitness image big brother in his iris as a fly that treads cautiously across his cornea like the thief slipping past stealing daylight I hope you guys take a look at my book and buy it. I'm gonna really push it tonight because if I don't sell something tonight, I may not even come on I am the true definition of a starving artist. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The brutalizing torment of a sanguinary attitude. The earthen scrabbling of gopher, blind mole or agitated dog, of rising growl, of hind legs clawing for traction. There exists an inarticulate moment before every beginning. Grunts and gestures before the clarity of a common language. Born into a time of war, acts of worship are the loudest things in the room without a voice. The lies told that are not lies, but lies told as if they were the truth. The plastic contradiction mistaken for conduit. And how shall we sing of God in absentia in a foreign land? In a time of war, good things do not come to those cowering in trench length of be patient, waiting. The red iron of congealed blood pooling past the visible edge of every euphemism, stretching back to that taken thing, a greed that wants everything behind the glass. Wouldn't it be terrible if life were fair and all the terrible things that happen to people happen because they deserve it. Then I wouldn't be the shadow hovering at the edge of every moment, hearing the same deceit over and over and over. Consequence that kind of sneaks up on you. The gasoline rainbow sheen of water, the brightest thing in wartime. They wouldn't be the reason I could trace collateral damage least said soon is best, back to its root source, the refugee blur of doubt at the corner of a camera's flash, anxiety without enough silver bullets to make the enemy rattle like a chain's purse, and malcontent burrowing from the propaganda of a sanguinary attitude. just because she feels since she can live and breathe on earth it's her responsibility to help the man next door this is called red a caution shade of combustion all appetite revlon red lipstick that mimics arousal and pornographic vermilion fingernails accentuate a splay erotic red hair kissed by flaming fire to sensual awakening and Margaret's purr, a perfect flint to start a quarrel or bullet that pretends a war. Fist tight crimson, resurrected and flung into scorching solar wind. White phosphorus phoenix, all molten red and gold inhalation, and frightened 
russet sparrows running red light stare and brush fire sweep of abandoned ship crows launch into arsonist auburn sky before an obsession with the pyre, terrifying, terrific as all creation, ascending angel blaze and dancing as divine, a red rebellious heart inflamed and rising from the state to cardinal conflagration, to red shift reincarnation at the igneous end of panic, scarlet obsession to vaporization, to crematoria bone gray ash and reborn as unrequited yet intimate act of passion. This is called Max and Gasoline Blues. Everything starts somewhere in legend that begins with longing deep and wide as Jim Crow swallow from a place inside that has no name. Begins in plantation lullaby and church house choir in cotton field holler and up country jip joint blues as white sheeted crows climb from the bushes from the government as chain gang boss man. Longing takes a leap of faith, begins a journey from desperation, a compass fashioned from hope and willful apprehension. Like put the hammer down, pushing a Cadillac named desire. Giddy with dreams and seated from the hollow about the heart, over the wall to flee, searching like the mad for a gap in tribulation between sorrow song and alone. It plucks, shave on a haircut six bits from cat gun and wood, seeking danger that has a rhythm, sex that has a sound, and freedom with a music all its own. Everything starts somewhere with what the men don't know, but the little girls understand. Why the first time a girl took off her drawers and threw them on the sage, they call that the blues. Why, when white girls started doing it, they called it rock and roll. Legend writ large in blackbirds of shadow, varying from a telephone line, omen of crows, a corvid rising and falling through halos of carrion urgency to spontaneous combustion bad as Superman. Mississippi come to Memphis, come to Chi-Town, howling at the moon. A bullet come in Sunday suit and star sequence socks. Come in trademark hat with somebody else's name. Like holy roll of scripture, come to burn the house down. Sun house and muddy waters. Howlin' Wolf and John Lee Hooker. Straight raise a voice, raising Calvary to salvation. Spiritual uplift after sorrow. Misery, knife cutting the gunslinger's six string appendage of road hardened axe. A backwoods wail of take me to church, blues man heart, and methamphetamine piano tweaking ivory keys of black and blue to mortal redemption. Eviscerates the narrative. Read it backwards like gospel and make it explode. Got that John the Conquer Roots. Johnny Walker and the mojo working too. And everybody start to sing. A joke joint jubilation that cancels every sin. Then it turned to a poem, and then I said, the hell with it. I'll put some of the story in and still make it a poem. So this is my long prose poem. Let me make sure I got it right. Bill This is called Scratch a Lie and Find a Thief. Basically, you catch somebody lying, they steal it from you. 
Yeah. When I read the line, the shipwreck deposited them onto a beach populated by naked, heathen savages, cannibals all. My immediate thought is, these survivors are doomed. They found false salvation, like made in the USA, the Iraqi and Afghan children believing American soldiers are there to bring them freedom, some baseball democracy with their monotheistic holy trinity of eternal suffering cross, their burgeoning budget of bullets, and their big head bucks. Most often, trouble does not start somewhere on the other side of the world, but originates inside the hypocrisy of America. The single, double, triple meaning of outstretched arms, pouring palms turned upward, disguising a nation proselytized in fraud we trust. Their inhumanitarian aid, the lingering stench of holy Jesus and tomahawk missiles, like air after the great flood, the crab barrel stink of everyone pushing ahead of those behind. When white boys with guns slaughter white children by the dozen, or spree kill moviegoers come to see the great white hope, the dark night vigilante cloaked in special effects. But always, the black boys, under the thumb of their Mac God, still the statistical propaganda of gun violence, as politicians mold their skins to fit the spin, always the sanitized hand out to the cowardly masses, soon distracted by the ultraviolet rays of reality TV, cell phones, and ticker tape news. Disaster is over there, far away, someplace else, censored by big business, preening their profits and spoils of war, as survival of the fittest. 16 seconds between the trigger pull in Las Vegas and the Hellfire missile neutralizes suspected terrorists in Pakistan, after which they will ask, did we hit a child? No. A wedding procession, cover your ass in a babble of many tongues and colors, every alphabet ever competing for significance, and ahead of us more open boxes of matches, mirrors shattered, but still reflecting guilt. Starts with quoting scripture and voice to justify evil. If it offends thee, pluck it out. September 15, 1963, a well-worn dog-eared Bible with flame-seared pages, a child's shoe gleamed from the smoking ash of rubble of a blown-up church, starts with patriotic hand-to-heart and bold-faced lies. The man gathered 11 bodies, including those of four girls younger than six, and set fire to them. Trouble when they least expected the hate that is a synonym for collateral damage, a means to an end. The 75-pound cotton gin fan bob wired to a child's sunken corpse starts with the designated victim of an act of God, texting as they stroll mindless into traffic, the latest smartphone as secular talisman. Starts with the same old souls, with the same old hungers and fears, the same old thing over and over, a crackhead addiction with the same results, the advance of progress, bleeding a trail of tears, and the peculiar institution with its legacy of injustice written in the verbs of citizen picnics and clinched fists, reservations, the internment camps, and Guantanamo Bay. Trouble does not start somewhere on the other side of the world, but most often passing ghost-like through metal detectors ever arrogant before 
dissident heartbeats originates with the judge who issues a warrant for the three-time DUI. The silhouette of Wolf merging stealthy with shadow starts a stitch in time that goes awry. A small smoldering purse discarded on the highway shoulder. An abandoned work boot with tied shoelaces lying in a pool of congealed blood. Always the terrorized survivors made rank with the smell of the human conditions. The victims who stop for a moment's rest. The thank God Almighty that does not provide security services to the proselytize. Their tattooed rosary beads circling up and around the arm as they enter Holy Mother Church. The false salvation, blind hope light made in the U.S. of A. Thank you very much. Bye, folks.